Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a truncated icosahedron, uh, better known as a soccer ball shape. So before we get started, I just want to point out that at the end of the shape is going to be pretty fragile. And to help support the thing, it helps to either put it on a pillow or what I'm going to be doing is using a ring of paper like this. This is just some cardstock that I have uh, curled up into a ring and taped together. It's about three quarters of an inch thick and about four inches in diameter, and that'll just help hold the shape up when we're done. So getting into the subunits, you need 12 of these large pentagonal ones and 30 of these small ones. To make the small ones, you start off with 12 magnets. You make a square of four and go the rest of the way around with the remaining magnets until you get this shape. Then you pinch them together. That's how you get these subunits, and again you need 30 of them. These larger subunits are made with two stacked rings of 20 and two stacked rings of 40, as well as five additional magnets. To begin making these subunits, you start with the two stacked rings of 40 and the five additional magnets. These get added between two magnets or around the uh, top ring and leave four magnets in between each one and that should have them be evenly spaced around the outside, like that. Then these two magnets here just need to get separated from each other and do that to all four or five of them. And you're left with this. This is going to fit on the inside of here, like that. Now as you go around, for each corner, this will pinch together like so like that. Now do that to each corner. And you're left with this shape here. Now flip it over and you'll see that these sides are still open. This magnet there, that one and that one need to come together. Like that. Now do that to the other four. And that's how you make this subunit. Now, you might be wondering, with these ones, with the kind of shape we're trying to make, why not just attach these together end on to make the truncated icosahedron? It seems like it's a little more of an elegant solution than having these stand in between each of the subunits. Well, the reason for that is that the, the angle's just a little bit wrong. It almost works, but the angle required for that has these bent down a little bit beyond where they like to be. These parts will split away like that in a trunk I, in a shape made the way I was just describing, and that will cause the whole thing to be really unstable. It doesn't even really like to hold itself into an even sphere type shape. And while the one we're making is by no means strong, it at least will try to hold itself into a, sheer, into a sphere shape. Uh, it just needs a little extra support to do that. So to begin assembling this, you attach these to the ends of these. The way that's done is you remove a single magnet from one of these ends, and one of these will just click right on just like that. Now, you need to make several different kind of subtypes here. You need to make one where all five of the uh, legs have these attached. So one with all five, one with four, then four each with three and with two, then one with one and one with none. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those and you'll see the different groups. Okay, so at this point you see that we have one subunit that has five of the extensions of the extensions added onto it. One with four, four with three, four with two, one with one, and one with nothing. Okay, from here we want to begin with the final assembly. 
What we start off with is this one with all five attached. This is going to be the uh, bottom of the shape, at least while we're building it. Once we're done, you can put it on whichever face you want. Um, from here, you take the one with four and you remove the extra magnet on the uh, one leg that doesn't have anything on it already. And this will attach to any one of these. Just like that. Now you notice when both of these are attached together, these magnets have a tendency to split away. You can just push them back together like that. Now from here, you want to use these with the uh, three ones and you'll do three in a row attaching them like that. Now at this point, you're probably starting to realize that you really need some extra way of supporting this because it won't sit on a flat table very easily right now. For now, I'm going to hold it in my hand until I attach one of these ones with two, which will go like that. From here, we can go ahead and bring this paper ring out and set it down in there, just like that. And that should give us a bit of a support while we build the rest of it. From here, you can start with the last one with three attachments, place it on any one of these pairs here. Now go the rest of the way around with three of these with two and then the one with one. you're down to the last piece, which I've already gone ahead and removed five magnets off the legs. This one just attaches right here. And there you go. You've built a truncated icosahedron. You may need to fix a couple of these edges. They are a little sensitive and they like to bow outwards like that. But once you have it situated on a stand or wherever you're going to keep it, you can just fix all of the visible ones. Now, as I said before, this shape is a truncated icosahedron. What I mean by that is if you were to take an icosahedron with its 20 triangles, and at each point where five edges come together, you flatten that out into a pentagon face. This is the shape that you end up with. So it has 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons, which are the triangles of an icosahedron with their points flattened out so that they become hexagons. So I guess I will smash it now.